The following KQED production was produced in high definition. The beef torta was out of this world. I actually don't discriminate against pizza. This is a temple to red meat. You are like a meat to ball. We couldn't see it and we couldn't hear it. Like, whoa, I'm actually in San Francisco. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bring me more. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. <laughs> Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. When the pressure is on, MBA student Patrick Reddington's restaurant effortlessly transforms his outlook on life just by eating there. It's the place to cozy up with someone special and forget about school and the outside world. And Dan Ross is director of operations for test prep exams. <laughs> He's also in training for a triathlon, which you'll win, of course. He replenishes his energy with naan and fish tikka in a Bengali-style sauce at a place with value, vibe, and service. But first, casting director Katie Cronin classifies her fresh fish place as the perfect location for a long, luxurious meal. She's quite at home at one of the tables or at the bar, a girl after my own heart, <laughs> and when she's in the mood to cook, she buys a choice cut and takes it home. Seafood is the name of the game on Castro Street at a place called Anchor Oyster Bar and Seafood Market. <laughs> I come from a long line of fishermen. My grandfather came here from Amalfi, Italy in the late 1800s, and he was a fisherman who came here to work on the salmon and crab boats in San Francisco. He also opened an oyster bar on Broadway uh, that was destroyed by the 1906 earthquake, but he continued to fish the rest of his life. That's how I think I ended up here at the Anchor Oyster Bar. <laughs> The staff here at the Oyster Bar has been here uh, almost as long as we've been in business. We have one waiter that's been here for 27 years. So it has a very familiar feeling to people, very um, homey feeling. Shrimp cocktail, fresh Dungeness crab meat, clam chowder. Our menu is the same menu that we've had for the last 30 years. We have not changed our original menu. My hope is that when customers arrive here, they feel the timelessness of the restaurant. I, I feel it could have been uh, built in the 40s, 50s, 60s. It has a timeless quality to it. But I hope when they leave, they feel that they've had a true, traditional San Francisco seafood experience. I'll have another one. <laughs> Okay, Katie, tell yes. me how often do you lose your keys? Is this a regular event? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a way not to pay to go that eat is, at a restaurant. Yeah, that is so funny. Yes, I'm the Anchor Oyster Bar. I live right in the neighborhood, and just recently I lost my keys. And I thought, okay, well, my girlfriend's at yoga. I got about an hour and a half. I'll just go to the Anchor Oyster Bar. And I had just taken a Vicodin, so I thought, I'm going to be little. <laughs> I didn't care. So I knew I'd be safe. That's just this one is of obviously the kind of your place. It right? is my place. I actually I don't no. want to say you belly up to the bar on a regular basis, but <laughs> but I'm comfortable at the bar. Right. And but what I, do you like to eat when you go there? Uh, well, first of all, their clam chowder is great. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's um, it's not too milky. It's not thick. It's got little chunks of potatoes, and the clams are so good. But my new favorite thing there, I saw it go by one day, and it was a <laughs> pasta with a creamy red sauce. With It had little shrimps in it, and it was so good. I mean, it was like... It was like an experience eating it, and I've eaten there many times. Right. But it's my new. F Every time I go in there now, I look for it. You look for the pasta. Yeah. All right, Patrick. Um, now, did you belly up to the bar when you were there? Is this I did your not <laughs> belly up to the bar. We were lucky enough to get a table. It I is went on small. A Saturday is, night. Yeah. It is a small oh, place. Yeah. Yeah, totally Twenty-five small. seats. Yeah. Ate at the bar. Yeah. I went with a couple friends, and I tell you, I, I feel like I went on a date with this restaurant, <laughs> and it was. One of the best first dates with a restaurant I've ever had. Oh, mm -hmm. It was so nice. good. Oh, I tell you, you know, it, and it's easy to love. It's mm -hmm. it's cute. It's it's petite. 
it's stylish. It's a place you want to, you know, introduce to all your friends. Mm -hmm. I was so surprised by this place because yeah. you don't expect that much from the outside, but then you see the crowd and you say, oh, it must be mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest surprises for mm -hmm. me was the Caesar salad of all things. Oh, yeah. The they salads. Have, yeah. I love the salad. Hot croutons. Yeah. Hot croutons oh. on the Caesar salad. I'd never thought of that. <laughs> and they are known for crab salads and, yes, and their salads. Yes. Yeah, big yeah. salads. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had the clam chowder uh -huh. and uh, garlic bread as well. And then mm, uh, had a, a mahi mahi special that was on the menu. Uh -huh. It was quite nice. And crab cakes too. We just we did it up big. Oh, yeah. good. And uh, it, one of the most surprising things about the place was I wouldn't expect in such a small place for there to be such attentive and deft service. Yes. Yeah. And uh, our waiter, I think his name was Mike. It is Mike. I just, know him. Yeah. <laughs> he has, a, he has a sixth sense yes. about how to be a waiter. Yeah, he knew you were on a first date with this restaurant. So Maybe, want, yeah. 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 All right, Dan, you're you're quiet over here, and yeah, I know you, you know, can talk. So. You know, I, was, I thought the restaurant was good, but mm -hmm. I just didn't get the same vibe, probably, that right. other people did. I went on a Sunday night, the the weather was absolutely horrible outside, okay. and we were sitting outside in the frigid rain. Because uh, there there's is no, no place to there's wait. There's no place it's to wait, like inside. wait inside. Yeah. But people linger mm -hmm. so long at that restaurant. There were people that finished their plates, and they were literally there for half an mm -hmm. hour, let's say, after, you know, chit-chatting and whatnot. And it was like, that would be I, Katie. Yeah, yeah probably, probably her. Which, which is one of the reasons I yeah. love it, oh, because yeah, you never feel wrong. Well, if you have a, if you have a seat a there, it's great. If you don't have a seat, then... Um, and, uh, you know, we went there and we had a good experience. It was just the bang for the buck just really wasn't there for me in particular. I, mean, I had the crab cakes. They were awesome. They were really crispy, mm -hmm. really thick crab cakes. Mm -hmm. They were they were great. Mm -hmm. um, crab was really fresh. Um, but I just I just felt that, you know, there had to be something else to it. So right. we got the seafood combination platter, which is uh, a bowl of mussels and clams. Mm -hmm. And there were a few shrimp in there. But the broth itself was, you know, white wine broth. But it just didn't have that same sort of kick that I've had in other restaurants. Mm -hmm. Maybe it like, wasn't spicy enough or something like right. that. Uh, but to use the restroom, you have to walk through the mm -hmm. kitchen. Mm -hmm. And that I just thought was amazing. I was like walking through there, and there's the chef, and then there are my crab cakes at my waist level. I was just like, what is going on here? And it, there was just a few things. There were only like three people working there for all the people that were in the restaurant. So right. mm -hmm. I I I've used yeah. the bathroom, and in a way I go back, it's kind of fun to see what's going behind the kitchen. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not discounting no, yeah, anything no. you said. It's just it's interesting to hear someone's experience, and I'm like, oh, yeah, but that's just how it is. And also, the music is always so good there. It's always, they have Billie Holiday or oh. something playing. You know. I think that you can get value there. It depends on how you order. If you go in for one of those delicious Caesar salads and a bowl of clam chowder, mm -hmm. you're going to come out thinking that was a great value. If you go in there and you order up the oysters yeah, and the chipino yes. and the you know yeah. specials of the mm -hmm. day. And the oyster shooters. Be, I, I understand yeah. he had oh, quite a few. Oyster 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 yeah, really good. good. And we got a few people oohing and on about it and they came out. They're them. really good. Yeah. yeah. If you want, if you love seafood, and you want it prepared the way it's supposed to be prepared. If you love seafood, go to the Anchor Oyster Bar. You will not be at all disappointed. It's the, it's the best. I think it's one of the best in the city. And you can buy fresh fish and take and it you home. Can, yes, and you can go there and you can buy that. fresh fish. You just go in and say, you guys, what's the market fish for the day? Mm -hmm. And you can buy it at market price. And they'll tell you, if you want, just go ahead and ask them, how should I cook this? The chef will tell you how to cook it. Wow. Isn't that That's cool? Great. That's awesome. Okay, Dan? Mm -hmm. I thought it was good, uh, but for the value, I would say that there's plenty of other restaurants in San Francisco. Okay, Patrick. I adore this place. I have a crush on it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for my second date with this restaurant. I, I do think that it provides options for value or options to blow your budget. And hot croutons on a salad. Mm. What could be greater than that? Go figure. Go <laughs> me. If you would like to try Anchor Oyster Bar and Seafood Market, it's on Castro Street at 18th in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-431-3990. It's open for dinner every day and lunch Monday through Saturday. Reservations are not accepted. And the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Patrick accuses his restaurant of sorcery. 
every dish is sprinkled with mood enhancing mystery. The sublime combination of food, wine, and service wraps him in its embrace. His spot is on Gilman Street in Berkeley, and it's called La Lime's Restaurant. Our cuisine probably used to be called California cuisine, rather eclectic. Now it's called contemporary cuisine. And our philosophy is to showcase just the best ingredients that we can get our hands on. Typically seasonal, local, organic, uh, the finest meats that we can get from Sonoma or California. Lalim's is a mom and pop operation. It's the opposite of corporate. It's not in a business district. Haig's mother, who still lives with them, um, Navard, um, she's like the grandma, she's 85, and she still comes every morning, folds napkins, clean silver, where she peels a bowl of garlic for us every day. If she didn't peel our garlic, we wouldn't have enough garlic sometimes. What I really love about working here is that everyone gets to be creative. So we have Latin cooks, formally trained uh, culinary students, and everyone gets to submit ideas. We all get to have creative energy. I think the, the diner gets to benefit from that, and it just keeps it more exciting and fun to work here. Okay, Patrick, I, you use the word magic a lot yes, to describe La Limes. I do. <laughs> because I feel like they can take my mood and transform it, and they can take my idea of what great California cuisine is about and transform it as well. I just love every dish that I've ever had there. And you've been going repeatedly for years? As much as I can. It is an expensive place. Right. So like, you know, say the parents are in town. Ah, there you go. Or, you know, you've got, Smart. you know, someone you want to impress or you're <laughs> celebrating a special occasion. I go, it's my number one pick because I feel like, you know, it is an expensive place, but you get every dime out of it. And uh, there's artistry coming out out of that kitchen. There's just, you know, brilliance. Brilliance. All right, Dan, do you, do you feel the same way? Are you enchanted by La Limes? I thought the food was quite good, actually. I went with my girlfriend. We actually went on Super Bowl Sunday. So I don't know. Yeah, that's what kind of boyfriend I am. I know. So we went on Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday. You're a winner, uh, I gotta tell you. You're a keeper. Uh, a yeah, <laughs> you're a keeper. <laughs> but we, when we walked in, we were the youngest people in the entire place. It seemed like everyone else was probably, it was a very a lot older than us, but it just felt like a little bit odd for me to, to be there. It didn't seem like in my wheelhouse in terms of restaurants that I usually All go to. All the young to. people were watching the Super Bowl. Uh, That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, probably. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, See, probably. I so I, I don't know if I got a fair, you know, summation of the restaurant from, uh -huh. from that experience. From atmosphere point. Exactly, from atmosphere point. But walking in there was awesome. I, the, you know, fresh orchids on the tables and everything, and people were having intimate conversations. It just seemed like a really nice restaurant to go to there for a sort special of a occasion. Zen feel, yeah. You're, zen yeah. feel. Yeah. Very calm when you get there. The waiters are really attentive. I really enjoyed the service of the restaurant. The portions I thought were great. We started out with uh, a sashimi of, of yellowfin tuna, which was mm -hmm. awesome, uh, with the edamame mm -hmm. beans. I had yeah. that too. That's so good. Yeah, and the sesame crackers, yeah. I thought it was excellent. And it wasn't actually too bad. I think it was like you know, 10 11 dollars for mm -hmm. that for that appetizer and it was really good. They gave you a big piece of sashimi for it. Uh, the seafood stew I thought was awesome. <gasps> they had did you, did you oh, No, I should have shaking yeah. here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was excellent. It had okay. rockfish in it and mussels and shrimp and I thought the sauce was just excellent. I, we saved some of the bread we you know use with bread and butter to dip more of it in there cuz we yeah. we finished all the broth. It was all right. gone. Right. And then we had the yellow tail tuna with the lentils and then the blood oranges and that was excellent as well the fish was cooked perfectly um, all the flavors were great and we just had a great experience at the restaurant and then we we don't well, hang on because I, I, oh, yeah. I saw Katie oh, over there yeah. shaking, her head. Well, shaking her head shaking her head I wish I had ordered what you ordered oh. because oh. I love seafood uh, I love all food I yeah. love food um, and now I, and I've met you and we're in love. <laughs> but, um, oh, you're so I, easy. And I ordered the French onion soup. It was freezing okay. out, although they call it uh, onion soup with Gruyere toast. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. It showed up. There was no broth. It was like mm. a bunch of pureed onions with a piece of toast and some cheese on top mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. And it tasted good, right. but it didn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't soup. It was really right. some pureed onions with some toast some and gruyere. But yeah, and then and they were rushing us, and uh, it was the middle of the really? week. Really? And it was like, why are you like? She said right away. She said, okay, if you're gonna order something like the cassoulet, you should order right now. So I did. 
because I thought, okay, I'm going to try the duck. Uh -huh. And I ordered it, but it came right after the soup left. It, 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 I felt very rushed. Mm. And unfortunately, the cassoulet was good. I was like, oh, good, I'm getting some broth, you know? Yeah. And then I bite into the duck, and it was cold. Ooh. Huh. And I Ooh. really couldn't believe it. And I, I can't believe that. I, I couldn't. I can't believe He's in shock over here. I though, am. This, I've yeah. had so many I really yeah. couldn't believe it. Well, mm -hmm. did you take a Vicodin before you went to the restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was sober. I was sober. I had to drive over the bridge. <laughs> they do have a lovely wine list. I hope you ordered they wine. They did. You know what? Very I affordable, you, under $40. I was very yeah. aware of that beautiful yeah. wine list. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. It was amazing. The, and the wine the was good. The prices are so good on that wine list. The wine was really good. Delicious was Spanish good. and French wines for it was $40. really yeah. good. And then I hear yeah, about yeah. what you ordered, and I yeah. and I almost ordered that. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was awesome. And they have great lamb dishes too. The I mean, lamb oh. looked great. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I, I had it that good. with uh, great citrus and mm -hmm. couscous. Fresh mm. lamb. Yeah, yeah. 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 it did. Yeah. It looked and really good. I saw absolutely. it. Well, I had I had dessert. We had this apple chousson. I don't yeah. even know how to pronounce it. That's right. right. Um, and it was a caramelized apples, and there was a pastry. And then it was topped with vanilla bean ice cream. I thought it was awesome. It was really good. It was huge, and we barely could could finish it all. I had the angels pillows, which is such I think mm -hmm. an inventive dessert. Little bits of cheese ravioli, soft sweet cheeses covered in a blueberry sauce, a very oh, sweet wow. blueberry sauce, and I'd never had anything like that for dessert before. Mm -hmm. And it was just the right degree of warm. It wasn't hot. It mm -hmm. was you know a little bit above room temperature, soft and comfortable and just absolutely delightful and sweet and washed it down with a glass of port. It went so well. Did you feel like you got your money's worth? I think I got my money's worth definitely. I think that it is uh, an anniversary date parents in town type restaurant, but it, it was great. I would go back definitely. You would go back. Whenever I go back, no matter whose dime I'm on, they're turning each penny into gold. <laughs> I love wow. this place. I, you know, every bite I've ever had there has been just absolutely delightful. Okay, and Katie, you got I would only go back with Patrick, basically. Okay. <laughs> You're I'm on. with Patrick. <laughs> but um, but yes, I it, I needed more atmosphere too. It was a little too mm. boring, might be the word. Mm -hmm. It was a little boring for me. But I think if I went with Patrick, I have I'd have a good time. All I right. Think the food is upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you would like to try Lalim's restaurant, it's on Gilman and Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-527-9838. It's open every day for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $50. Dan's choice is all about fragrance and flavor. The olfactory senses are awakened the second you walk in the door. The Bangladeshi specialties on the menu of this Indian restaurant deliver punch and plenty of vegetarian options. It's on Polk Street at Clay in San Francisco and it's called Indian Aroma. My family cook for a living and I am working 24 years. First I started in Bangladesh, after that England, and right now this lovely city in San Francisco. I can say it's the best city in the world. In the restaurant business, as a, you know, couple of things is very important. First is freshness, second is the flavor of the food, three is quality of the food, neat and clean, and good service. It's clean is the most important. Why people is eating Indian food? For flavor. Indian food is not about the chili, it's hot. Spice are very delicate, and you have to know how long you are cooking the spice. Indian aroma customer, they love the, our food, so I am happy, you know, I am proud. All right, Dan, you say everything here is awesome. Yeah. Because it is. I, I <laughs> love this restaurant. Uh, my girlfriend lives about two blocks away from it, and it's one of those places where I, every time I go over there, I'm always like, what am I going to get for dinner? And it's always Indian aroma. I, I just love the food there. The naan is excellent. Uh, the garlic naan is just 
the best. Uh, I just love it. Um, and I usually get the, the chicken tikka or right. uh, or, or so anything that I really get on the menu is I just feel it's it's excellent. Never had a bad experience at that restaurant at all. Um, Tulu, my my favorite waiter, and I usually go in there. He remembers me. I live in Fremont, so every time I go in there, he's like, "Hey, what's up? How's Fremont and everything?" Yeah. Like I run the city or something. I don't know, <laughs> but for some reason, he he you know he's always asking me about that, and he he knows what I like. He knows what my favorite beer is, and I, I just love the experience. The value is great. And I, they have home delivery, free yeah, home delivery. Yeah, they do have home yeah, free home delivery as well. And we've have done that in the past too. If I don't feel like actually getting going out to get dinner, but you know, for linen tablecloth service, great great atmosphere and ambiance and you just feel like you're at right. home in that place. Right. I, I just love going there. And Katie, what about you? Did you have a good experience at Indiana? Well, I, yes, it, I definitely had a good experience. We had a lot of fun. I went with a group of friends mm -hmm. and it was really like we walked in, we got a table right away um, and I loved the, the service, the wait yeah. service. They were so, told us in detail what everything was. Um, it was really good. I, you know, I don't think it's great. Yeah. When you mentioned the nan, yeah. I actually don't think their nan's very good. Yeah, the oh. garlic nan. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was disappointed. Oh. But I did love, I love the chicken tikka masala. Yeah. I loved it. Oh. I will go to the other side of town to, yeah. to get that. And it was well, a very mi it's a very mild sort of Yes, it is, which is, chicken tikka which is what I like. The garlic naan, you know, the garlic didn't seem cooked. It just seemed like raw garlic pounded into a piece of bread. Mm. The kima naan, which is supposed to be, you know, ground lamb yeah. inside a, a, a... It was just utterly frightening. The lamb was, you know, you, you, you peel into this bread and this sort of red juice comes out oh. and, the mm. you know, and there were strips of some meat that didn't taste at all right. like lamb or really anything. And oh. I, yeah, and so we were... And we naan is just a flatbread for, for right, those yeah, people. right. And so we were hoping to try the right. plain naan mm -hmm. and yeah. one of the like the onion kulcha. We uh -huh. also ordered that, never showed up. Right. Hmm. Uh -huh. um, and it wasn't that crowded a restaurant. They do do uh -huh. something a little different. They do kind of a, a, a Bengali style uh -huh. or fish. They do a korma yeah. with kind of right. almonds and coconut right. in the sauce, yeah. which is a almost like right. a curry yeah. sauce but thicker yes. and and yeah. has. Yeah. A, well, I will say there Did was a try? there was a difference between the vegetarian dishes and the meat dishes. Mm -hmm. um, we had some of the sog paneer, which was yeah. palatable. Uh, the chana masala, you know, it, it did make it to the table. That was a plus. The most shocking thing really had to be we ordered the tandoori mix grill. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's the most expensive thing on the menu. It's mm -hmm. about fifteen bucks. So this is a valued place. Yeah. And they're known yeah. for tandoori. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it was just presented kind of you know as a big pile of different bits of flesh on a plate. There was oh. something that must have been a kebab and mm. uh, tasted like maybe there was, you know, a couple different meats in there. It was supposed to include shrimp. There were no shrimp on there. Did yeah. you have any vegetarian dishes? Yes. The, I, yeah, the, the, the chana masala and the sag paneer. Chana masala, was very there is, a, there is a big difference there between the vegetarian dishes, which seem yeah. to be cooked with a little bit of skill. I, oh, I, and, I, and what yeah. about samosas? Because that's sort of a the samosas, you know, a, a yeah, benchmark for Indian restaurant. Really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had the that pakoras. That was actually, good. I think, yeah. one of my favorite things, other than the chicken tikka masala. Oh, but the, did you like the samosas? Because I love I like the samosas. I, I, they're I really do. good. Now, tell, though, yeah. did he just not eat the right thing? Should he go back again and try it? I, mean, I don't give know. Us, give us some, some. I don't know because I've always had an excellent experience every time I've been there. Everything I, I order there is is great. I don't know if you peeved off the the cooking. <laughs> staff right when you walk uh, in the door or something? We must have because I don't we didn't know. get half the things we ordered. So. Yeah, I don't know because I've always had a great experience. I always get the best service and especially for the value and just going down to sit down, nice you know, nice table, right. having an intimate dinner, candlelit dinner uh, with my girlfriend, anything like that where we're just with friends. It's a great restaurant. You but know, it's still casual. It's not yeah, it's exactly. very casual. It's very casual. Yeah. 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 I mean, with, the, with the price as well too, I mean you can go to all these other discount Indian restaurants, you right. know, like on the corners or whatever and, and get it get a good Indian meal right. but for you know paying a dollar extra in for the service and everything that you're gonna get for it, it's definitely worth it for me all right I would go back I think it's a great place to go if you want to have a birthday party and invite a bunch of friends and not feel too concerned about the money I think it'd be fun for that you know yeah. but I loved that chicken I love hmm. the tikka masala. Yeah. I think it's a good neighborhood restaurant. Every time I go there, I have a great experience. And for the value and what you get, it's the perfect spot to go out right before you go out to the, all the bars in the neighborhood and everything. I just think it's, it's a really good spot. All right. Fill up on Indian food. Yeah. Patrick? If I were ever chained to someone who forced me to go back, I would order <laughs> the vegetarian dishes. 
but I would steer clear of any of the meats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If you would like to try Indian Aroma, it's on Polk at Clay in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-771-0426. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted. And the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Well, I have to thank my passionate guests on this week's show, Katie Cronin, Patrick Reddington, and Dan Ross. The first restaurant visited with Katie was Anchor Oyster Bar and Seafood Market. Patrick is head over heels in love with this place and can't wait to go back and introduce his friends, while Dan felt the place just a little too small for a dining experience. Patrick's La Lime's restaurant in Berkeley was not a hit with Katie, who wanted more atmosphere and warmer food. <laughs> Dan, however, had an enjoyable experience. It wasn't cheap, but it was solid on all counts, so that he'd go back for a celebration. Finally, Dan's Indian aroma hit the spot for Katie. She'd go back for the chicken tikka masala alone. It was the right price. While Patrick's experience left him wanting none of it. All right, mixed reviews all around. That's okay, we like that. Don't forget that if you want more discussion, you can visit our website and add your comments. You can also view this and all the shows online or download the podcast. And you can learn about the wines we've been drinking today, like this excellent Oregon Riesling, which, by the way, we've finished the bottle. Yes, we do drink the wine. <laughs> <laughs> and a lovely Syrah from the Crozet Hermitage region of France. They're available through the KQED Wine Club. That's it for now. Join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash checkplease. KQED Television Production.